back in the organizer of Photoshop Elements 10 and I'm going to open this image entitled Paris by clicking it and then coming up to the down facing arrow next to the word fix and clicking it to reveal the submenu and now I'll choose guided photo edit to open the selected photo inside the guided edit mode. Now as you can probably tell we've got a very low contrast image. The primary reason for that is that it was taken on a cloudy and very overcast day so the colors have come out that dull and muted. We've got this white overblown sky and there isn't much in it that will liven things up so we're going to have to take charge ourselves and see if we can improve the colors and the contrast with a couple of these options. By the way before I go any further this is an image I took last year of the fake Eiffel Tower, just in case you were confused. This one's not in Paris, this one's actually in Las Vegas, although it is at the Paris Hotel Complex on the Strip. And the weather, by the way, does look like it was at Paris during the winter, not in Vegas during the summer, which is when this photograph was taken. In any event, let's start by coming over to the colour and lighting section and choosing the Enhance Colors Edit. So here we've got options to change the hue, which is to change the colors in the image. So you can see that by dragging this slider around, we remap all the color values, which is not, in this instance, a desirable effect as you can see. I'm gonna make sure that we reset that. We'll look at that in more detail once we get into the chapter on colour, by the way. So we're not just leaving that option, it's just one that we don't need for this photograph. The saturation option, on the other hand, boosts the intensity of colours in the image, and that's something that we're going to want to do because things are looking very understated and dull at the moment. So drag this slider up to see our colours saturate, which is good. And I'm going to say a value of around about 40 is what we're looking for. Again, if you want to change that, if you want to increase that by a few more or maybe reduce it by a few less, then go ahead and do that. Just depends on how you're viewing that image. We're not going to touch the lightness of the image because A, we don't need to, and B, it's a fairly useless command in the first place. So once we're happy, we'll hit the Done button and whilst we've got the tower looking much better, the sky needs some major work. Now, there's two edits we could apply to change that, either the brightness contrast option or the one we're going to use, lighten or darken. So go ahead and click it, and now we're faced with either lightening the shadows, darkening the highlights, or increasing the midtones contrast. Now, it's important to note that if you're struggling with some of these terms, all will be revealed in the next two chapters. The reason we're looking at the guided edit mode before we discuss terminology is because the guided edit mode is designed to be intuitive and overly simple. For example, we've got clear descriptions above these three sliders as to what action they perform if we change them. And in way of a demonstration, we're going to focus our attention on the middle slider, darken highlights. The description tells us that it will only affect the light areas. So if we increase it, we start bringing back some of the colors and detail in the sky. Now, just to clarify, this detail has always been there, but it's just so muted previously and so dull that we couldn't see it. That slider is simply exaggerating what little detail we had there in the first place. I'll make sure the slider is whacked up all the way, not something that we're going to want to do very often, but it's really going to show you how far we can go. And if I zoom in, you can see that we've got some light fringing around the tower, but I'm not overly worried about that. I'm just gonna click the Done button and accept the change, and hopefully that has demonstrated just how easy the guided edit mode is to use. Again, it's not going to produce the best effects, but it is going to produce a good balance between a simple implementation of an effect and a fairly good looking one, as you can see what we've got on screen right now. I'm gonna come down to the bottom and choose the before only view and then switch back once I've digested that to the after only view to see just how far we've come, all with just a few basic color and tonal adjustments inside the guided edit mode. And again, if you've been looking forward to using Photoshop Elements, if you haven't used it very much in the past and you're hoping to learn, 
some really neat stuff in this course, then that is just for starters, believe me. We're going to get onto some really, really cool effects coming up in the next few chapters. Next up, in fact, we're going to take a look at improving and adjusting skin tones.